Hi, welcome to Staten Island Community Television. My name is Paloma Mingozzi. I'm your host uh, on Artists with a Message. I have Deborah Woodbridge here today, house coordinator of the Conference House, and June Palo, artist, musician, singer-songwriter. Welcome, both of you. It's very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Love for having you. me. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Uh, so the first thing we want to talk about is a little bit about the Conference House because there's so much history and uh, it's really a beautiful, enjoyable place to be, very much fun. So if you want to just give us a little briefing. Okay. Thank well, you. Uh, seven years ago I became the caretaker at the Conference House and ever since have become a integral part of bringing wonderful events to the park for the community. Um, this is both with history and with culture. Uh, the Conference House Association is trying to improve the footprint culturally on the southern tip of Staten Island and one of the things that we aim to do that with is the wonderful Conference House Art Expo which we are going to hold on May 20th with rain date of May 21st and uh, we're looking forward to hosting a lot of artists, installation artists, we have Art Lab coming down and they're going to do projects not just for kids, if the whole family wants to get involved in doing something that's wonderful. We have a fabulous band called Peace Train, a uh, right. Staten Island band of great renown and uh, they're really wonderful guys and they're coming out to play music for us. Wow. Yeah, and we also have house, uh, the house made over as a uh, art show and the installation we art. We have crafts, we have people selling uh, handmade goods, and best of all, we have student artists. All That's the schools amazing. from Staten Island have been uh, invited and most That's are taking great. us up on the invitation to send representatives of their children's art to the house and we're going to be exhibiting that. That's beautiful. So basically bringing the, the entire community together and for this amazing all-day event and you can showcase your art and your crafts and big huge installations which is Great, amazing to see that. Yes. And I remember last year there was um, a big nest, a life size nest. Um, what and else? Scott Lebedo had a 40 yes. foot oh, yeah. bug <laughs> on the front That's lawn. That's right. It was fabulous. Yes. It was fabulous. It, so. it went viral on, uh, on and Facebook. Amazing. And the schools, uh, when they participate, their art is all together. Schools yes. from all over the island? Yes. Yeah, we label them, and it's just wonderful to see the kids' faces. They light up when they see their own art on the fence. They mm. really love it. They That's really awesome. love it. That's so great. we have twice as many installation artists coming this year, wow. and we hope to have many, many more students than we did last year. Yeah. We're, we're hopeful. So of course, exciting. you don't know until they've all put their things in, but I think it's going to be a good showing this year. I'm sure. It was, it's very exciting uh, every year for us also, for the South Shore Artist Group, to be part of, uh, part of the Conference House exhibit. We've a very exhibited. large part of that. <laughs> yes, we've exhibited for uh, since 1946, I believe, and this year will be our 50th anniversary, mm -hmm. uh, anniversary on the grounds of the conference house, which right. is amazing. Um, I hope you don't Such mind. Such dedication. Um, <laughs> I'd like to also mention, too, that the Parks Department is also simultaneously that day putting on an event called Bird Fest. Oh. All things avian, yes. And That's it's going to be absolutely fabulous. So there's not only the art, but there's also nature that uh, is going to be presented simultaneously, which is something that's very dear to my heart because mm -hmm. as you can see from my art, these are actually microscopic pictures of the insides of trees. That's one of my subjects, so it's near to my heart. And uh, having the birds, that's just another frontier I haven't hit yet, but I think that uh, it's gonna be really quite extraordinary having all those people there as well as the arts. Oh, I think it's wow. going to be a lot of fun. Well, let's let's talk about your method of art. What you're actually doing is combining science and art, which is amazing because uh, I remember a while back I, I also was lucky to see an exhibit in California where they had created um, cancer cells 
And so from something, it was an entire exhibit, from something that is devastating, uh, the creation of, of something beautiful, beautiful. cell yeah. that is, yeah, so it's that in that same sense, it brings you a little bit of healing. So yeah, absolutely. Let's talk about the interaction of the um, ecological uh, process of your work, your ideas, and uh, how, where your inspiration came from for this scientifically combining the art uh, with well, science. Well, that's funny you should ask. Um, the parks uh, have always um, figured rather largely in my artistic horizon in a sense because what I've done here are microscopic pictures of the insides of trees. It's taking the mundane and showing the joy of it and the life force in it is shown by the gold. That's what's significant for me in using the gold is that it shows the life force of those paintings. I'm just going to grab it sure. for a second so we can show it visibly. So yeah, play. so what I've done here is I've shown the actual structure of the inside of the tree. And I forget which tree this is, but just the idea that you could look at something that you might think, oh, looks like nothing. And then you look closer, you just take a second look at it, and you realize how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like looking at a dandelion. You think, ah, there's tons of them. But if you really look at that dandelion, really look the at it. The structure of it. You, you understand the beauty of it and the mm -hmm. whole just unfolding magnificence of, of something even so seemingly infinitesimal, but yet. And that's the great thing about art. You can have one subject and then everyone's different view, different eye. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so this is your right. interpretation. This is your imprint, yeah, your stamp on, uh, on this, this amazing artwork. And a lot of people, sometimes you do have to explain it. You know, people say, no, you, you're not supposed to explain art, but sometimes you do because we do recognize some of the marks that we make, but sometimes we have to explain them too. And I find that very interesting so when someone is, explains their art or their poetry or how it came about. I, I, yeah. I like that. There's always a story. So tell us your interest with the science, uh, science and art. Well, it's, it's just the idea of looking at something that you might not think is all that important, but yet when you see it in a new light, you're bringing out its beauty and appreciation of it. So you were talking about the cancer cells, yes. something that would be horrific to most people. It would be to me on first thought. But when you go ahead and you think about the fact that here's something that was man, well, not man-made, but made of nature in a sense, mm -hmm. see that it's just... Well, An amazing piece. Sometimes they say that the body creates cancer cells to actually defend uh, part of part of your anatomy. Mm. Uh, so it's that's I'm not a hundred percent on that, but sometimes it's a natural process. Mm. So you know, it's something to think about. Uh, illnesses right. are there for a reason, not always. Um, shouldn't always be projected in a, in a bad light because there is a purpose for that also, unfortunately. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so now, I'm a mm -hmm. cancer survivor. Exactly. I just had my sixth year anniversary for surviving breast yeah. cancer. And I feel a lot of the paths that I've taken since then is as a result of having cancer. So, yeah. it, And I try to, to look at it in a positive way, you know, try to... to um, have positive results after that. So, and I don't want to be defined as just that. So, I and think. And I'm sure the art also helped you so much too. Definitely. I know when I'm, when the, we have a tendency, an actual need to do the art, and it helps Very us. Very true. Yeah. So, whatever mood we're in, <laughs> and as soon as we come to that page and we, and we start creating, it helps, and it helps with the healing process. So, Absolutely. Yeah. It's very true. Um, but, so tell us the inspiration behind all this. I know you, we spoke prior. Well, um, there was know, a parks father. event way back, and it was the Million Trees event where people planted mm -hmm. a million trees. And there was wow. a gentleman's book that was being sold there, and it was called The Man Who Planted Trees. Now, this same title has been used through the past, and it was one that 
uh, it took place in France once as well, a gentleman who went around and planted walnut trees because he wanted to bring that population up. This gentleman, what he's trying to do is reincorporate the champion trees of the ancients, that is, the redwoods, the sequoias. So I read this book and I'm thinking to myself, wow, here's this guy and he's trying to bring to life something that is almost extinct. Mm -hmm. And sort of, sort of a somewhat wobbly, I suppose, parallel, you might say, is that I want to take things that are of an unusual nature and bring them to light. Mm -hmm. I have a set of still lifes that I've done that are not rather still lifes like you see the round apple, but rather it's the cut apple and you see the inside. Mm -hmm. So it's an interior still life that you're actually looking at. I like to see what's inside, what makes things work, how things happen. Yeah, okay. So that's that's one of the things that is my um, inspiration, thing. I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Yeah. But this guy really, really inspired me, and it sort of made me think about ecology. There, from that, another spin-off was reading another book uh, by Diana Beresford Kroger, which is a book of small stories, and unfortunately I can't remember the name, but she writes a number of essays of having to do with biology and just understanding biology in a very simple yet interesting way of realizing this is what it is, this is what we need to save, this is how we can save it, okay. and sort of gives you the blueprint how many people are following her up on it? I don't know. But here's an artist who's just trying to say, here is out here. So I did a painting talking about her as an essay that she did where she was talking about aerosols, which are the compo com compounds that trees emit out of their stomata, which are on the underside of their leaves, which are beneficial. Hmm. She talked about children being taken into the woods in Europe and it improving their respiratory systems as well as children who had learning disabilities being better yeah. after these treatments of just being brought into the woods. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, yeah. this is just amazing. So I did a uh, triptych which actually shows an abstract of the aerosols leaving the stomata. Okay. And I titled it Aerosols, Breathe Deep. See, I, I think most people, when maybe when they're just passing by looking at art, they don't stop to think about what the artist was thinking behind that painting. And you just told everything mm -hmm. has a story. And this, this was so interesting. I mean, thank you. And a message. It's true. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to put that in the title of a painting. <laughs> when I mean, you don't want to bore people, it's like, do I want to read a whole paragraph before I get to look at the thing? But, but, we are moving towards that in a futuristic light where we do need to understand our environment, uh, everything that it's made up of, uh, communication, even in the universe, mm -hmm. you know, all that. So it yeah. is beneficial. So talking about it and, and trying to put it together, have an understanding, like you said, communication is very important. Mm -hmm. And what I got out of you just um, jarred me, jarred a memory from me when I went to Italy two years ago. I was in a medieval forest, it's a pine forest, and the trees are tremendously huge. But the moment, you will never forget that smell of the forest because just the pine and it was near the ocean, so you, you get that mix of woods, pine tree, and the ocean, and you just... The mineral with the organic. Mm. It's amazing, and just the, the just being there, and the moment you enter it and you smell that, and you, you don't forget that it's, it's not only visual, but just every, all the senses are awakened. Everything is made better. So nature is so important. And I feel that too. We have to get back to that. We have to get back to being with nature and learning from everything that we see, you know, from woods to mm -hmm. flowers to grass to uh, you know, sand and, and mm -hmm. ocean. Right. Yeah. Sometimes things as simple re remedies, instead of taking a whole pile of chemicals for something, a yeah. simple remedy may do the trick. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, also, I just want to talk a little briefly about Canada because you're originally from Canada. Yes, I am. And uh, you said a lot of it. Uh, your father also created art, 
and so you learned a lot from him. So what are some of the similarities maybe from, uh, from that land to, to Staten Island, you know? <laughs> Well, um, well, there is a vibrancy in the arts in Canada, and they're uh, very well supported in Canada. There's a lot of granting. Um, yes, it's always a bone of contention as to who gets the grant and for how much, but okay. um, it, it is well supported there, and that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing about the way the Canadian government runs, uh, okay. and hopefully we don't lose any more than what we've got right now, okay. because that would be of great concern. Um, there is a vibrant community in the arts there, not as large as here, of course, just by virtue of the population difference, but a lot of fun. And, well, I was very lucky to grow up in an artistic environment. My father was uh, an instructor at Ontario College of Art, okay. and as such, he, uh, I got exposed to a lot of wonderful different people who were instructors yeah. there, students that came from all over the world. So Beautiful. it was a lot of coming and going of people. And uh, now that I'm at the conference house, there's a lot of similarity to that because there's so many people coming to visit the park right. yeah. and uh, yeah. from all over the world as well. So you get that same exposure on a slightly different level. Now I'm an adult instead of a child and you know I can take in a lot more. You know, you, sometimes you yeah. wish you could go back and go, oh, I needed to ask that person that question. And then you were so young that you didn't, it didn't occur to you then, yeah. you know. But you're also, you're also um, very good at organ organizing events. You were mentioning something about, um, you know, 300 person well, events and... Uh, <laughs> yes, my father used to run um, combination kite flying contests and pig roasts for his students. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and awful? the first one, there was about 300 people at it. So uh, wow. I'm used to uh, holding parties. Yeah. Uh, from a very young age, we were used to doing all sorts of things like making, you know, 70 pounds of potato salad for something, you know. <laughs> Quite crazy, but uh, so much fun, so, so much fun. So that's where your passion comes from, too, because obviously you are in that environment. I'm definitely a social animal. That's <laughs> you have to be. <laughs> Me, too, I enjoy. We had smaller parties, but always at home, and my parents always invited people over. Our house was always full of people. It was so yeah. um, I'm on that social scale, Yeah, too. it's a good way to have things, I because uh, yeah. you, you get to experience other people's culture, but also their philosophies and their ideas. And to me, that's wonderful, because it fosters, I think, a climate of, of tolerance of other people, if Isn't you're used funny? to seeing other the, people. I come from a theatrical family, mm -hmm. as far back as my grandfather being in vaudeville at, with his brothers and his cousins and all my uncles played instruments and sang. How wonderful. Yeah, so, you know, it's, always people in the house. Yeah, so I, I think we have a, a, an actual physical need to be with people, to, to be around and communicate and do things with them. And that's one of my favorite things to do is collaborate. And I'm always collaborating if it's not with June, if it's with Maria, it's the But it's always uh, amazing other. how we're drawn to those kind of people. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's very true. That's yeah, very true. It's always fun. <laughs> we kind of know each other, I think. We have an uh, underlying knowing of uh, artists knowing each other, I don't know, it's, it's some kind of connection. It's like almost an invisible thread. I agree. Oh, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> See? Um, all right, so then my last question that I had is, uh, what, was, what is your vision, a futuristic vision of where you see yourself? Uh, you know, and the conference house, but also personally with your artwork, and um, how how do you balance artwork, home, work, uh, everything? How do you balance life that includes your artwork? Because many people go to work and they don't have time for art. They have to clean. They have to cook. They have to do other things. So they never make time for creativity. How do you manage that? Well. I don't know if it's, uh, not to disagree, but I, I uh, don't know if it's a matter of manage for me. I think it's a matter of physical need to have to do art. Okay. So Definitely. it's something that gets incorporated, shall we say, <laughs> for want of a, hmm, another word, but incorporated in a sense that, you know, if I'm working on a painting, it may be off just 
to one side where I'm doing another activity that pertains to the house that is of a pressing nature, but it's always there and it's always in my mind that I yeah. need to uh, go back to it. You know, you, you, yeah. you have a need to create and it's ever present in your mind. I'm looking at it, I'm thinking one aspect of it, I'm figuring out, you know, just how am I going to make that work, you know, whatever that is. And uh, so that's one aspect of it. And I've always had art as part of my existence, so it's like something that's always been in to the, uh, the fabric of my being, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the um, vision I have, basically I intend to make art until the day I'm gone. So that is my grand plan in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, just trying to keep my voice out there and have people understand the beauty of things and to communicate mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. What I see for the conference house is, uh, and I think the board is very much um, on the same wavelength as I am with regards to having uh, a cultural footprint that is larger on the South Shore for us, mm -hmm. uh, incorporating not only the conference house itself as a building, but just their uh, building a community of more arts involved in the South Shore. Not necessarily that it's exclusionary, but rather that our whole borough enjoys itself in a more wholesome a and a more all-encompassing way. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that really comes into play. Um, and in terms of what my, my vision for me personally is, I have never really thought about like a grand plan as to, you know, like I'm gonna be here in five years, I'm gonna be there in five years. I just, oh. I, and maybe it's because I'm getting closer to the end than the beginning oh, that, no. you know, I think <laughs> yeah, about, <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> you know, people say they're going to retire. I'm not going to retire. Mm -hmm. I, to me, I know so many people that when they retire, they lose an incentive and mm -hmm. um, I don't plan to do that. So I, I, I don't mean to sound vague, but it's just like, I'm just going to keep on going. No, I mean, not, not <laughs> everyone has, yeah. And I'm glad that you said, um, you know where you are with the art because it is part of our day mm -hmm. we don't even really think about fitting it in it just fits in because it's a priority right. it's who we are so whether you're an artist yeah. a musician it just becomes who you are and it's mm -hmm. part of your day as if you would do anything else right mm -hmm. i find myself sometimes uh just waking up at night and if i didn't create that day then i wake up at night mm. and I have to do some kind of painting or writing and I like the silence of that so I really enjoy you know just mm. so many things come out at night <laughs> right yeah. but that's what they say both writers and, and artists uh, create at night it's the best time for us We're like night owls right well, um, less interruptions that way. <laughs> that too, yeah. yeah. No phones, no dogs, no mailmen. <laughs> um, the other thing, like sometimes when I, you know, part of our imagination and we don't explain, but sometimes when I walk down the conference house, I always imagine walking by a beautiful, um, well-managed flower garden, which you do have, but it's in enclosed. Um, and I just imagine beautiful marble statues as you walk through and, uh, you know, in a beautiful pathway. And so hopefully there'll be beautiful things happening in the future where there are, it's a, it's a more, uh, I also, also imagine a piazza, but I don't think any, anybody's going to build that yet. <laughs> so let's just get that, but, you know, that pavilion but, built yeah, first. <laughs> right, That's exactly. what I want to see happen. And but I do I imagine hear. that because it's a beautiful place. And yeah. I, I walk there every day. And uh, it's a place yeah. very special to me because of my father, too. Uh, we used to go there and talk to the fishermen. And he, he was in the Italian Navy. And so it's very special to me. So every day I walk. And I get my exercise, and I breathe in the green, and green is good for the heart. And I just remember, <laughs> you know, it's, and I'm sure for a lot of people that, that happens, you know, it's a memory. I've seen a lot of things there. I've seen weddings. I've seen proposals. I've seen when the pav pavilion was there, uh, you know, people would propose there, bring a table with the wine and the candles and propose and it was amazing, you know, so I'm hoping that... We see the whole I'm spectrum sure. of life there, which uh, is it's wonderful. It's beautiful. 
it's the one place where everyone does ga gather. So mm -hmm. it's really nice. Well, but the pavilion is supposed to be their starting, I understand, to break ground in the end of May. I heard this from a wow. reliable source. Great. So let us hope, wow. because that will further the community's involvement right. with the park, too, because oh, it's yeah. always been a wonderful destination for a lot of people. Ye I hope also once that's built, I hope I can uh, have some kind of a uh, plein air uh, painting group, bring my group out there and, that's a great idea. and paint there. Oh my gosh, I love that. Beautiful, beautiful uh, sunsets and sunrises and just everything. It's very serene. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to jump right into poetry. Um, the other thing is, uh, before I do that, just want to talk about how there's still time to get applications for the fence show uh, oh, at the yes. expo. Yes. So we would just, your email is on that? Or no? Um, no, but they just are call. welcome to call my own cell phone number, which is on the uh, board there. It's 917-539-2559, and I'd be okay. happy to send them an application or work with them on figuring out a way to get them in. Yeah, and if they don't make it in time this year, then next year is fine. You know, just keep it in mind. It's usually right. in May every year. Yours is in May, mine is in June. Mm -hmm. uh, very exciting things happening at the conference house. Thank you, Deborah. It's very happy oh. that you came and, and Thank you for having here. me here. It's Thank been a you. true pleasure. But don't go <laughs> anywhere because now we're gonna do a little bit of poetry. Oh, and wonderful. so jump in anytime you feel. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit. National Poetry Month. Uh, April is National Poetry Month. It's celebrated uh, the entire month of April worldwide to bring awareness and appreciation of poetry. It was organized in 1996 by the Academy of American Poets on their website, poets.org. Each year, publishers, booksellers, educators, and literary organizations Teachers and librarians promote poetry, encouraging writing a poem a day as a celebration of the art. As poets, we have the fun fundamental responsibility to encourage creativity through writing as a way to inspire language and enriching our culture. To read and to write is empowering and ensures future leaders in the community. Writing is taking a thought, expressing it, and processing it on a platform. It is a form of therapy that gradually eases feeling of feelings and trauma, or trauma. Writing improves communication skills, creative thinking, and is a necessary tool to express ideas and emotions, beliefs, and personality. Now, based on a study from the U.S. Department of Education and the National Institute of Literacy, 32 million adults in the U.S. cannot read above fifth grade level. Wow. 32 million adults can't read above fifth grade level in the U.S. So not, it's not even you know, anywhere outside of the U.S. 19% of high school graduates can't read <laughs> at all. Wow. According to UNICEF, nearly one billion people will exit in the 21st century unable to read a book or sign their names, and two-thirds of that will be women. So one billion people are not either interested in reading or cannot read for whatever, whatever reason. So uh, poetry is absolutely a necessity a necessity in any community. And we, we have that responsibility as artists and, student, and uh, students. We're always students, right. but <laughs> as, uh, as leaders and teachers, we have that responsibility to go out and almost preach writing, uh, you know. And the thing is that we're not saying is the beauty of it, the beauty of getting to know ourselves through the writing. So, June, I'm going to give you the voice now. And uh, if you would show us your artwork, because sure. you do something very special. Just came out with a new book called Poe Archery. Right. And uh, you and I will both have a presentation of our books. Mine is Always in Love. And um, yeah, you do oh, have your book? My book, yes. I and 
We will both exhibit the book and present it on May 11th at Escas. Yes. And uh, 7 o'clock, I believe, right? Yes. That should be nine. very exciting. Uh, mine is educational because when I started writing, I started writing in Italian. I started writing Italian poetry for that reason that I was losing my culture, my heritage, mm. and uh, all that remained was food. So most people know Italians as great cooks, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but they don't realize we have the art, we have the language, we have the, the culture, we have the architecture, we have the, the, the words, we have the words, the language. And it's always been, Italian's always been a language of love. So I started writing um, with an internet group in Italian, and then I started writing in English. So uh, I completely wrote these poems, always in love, I'm always in love, I'm in love with everything, I'm in love with the world, I'm in love with people, I'm in love with the grass, the birds, and the butterflies. Uh, every little thing counts to me, well, and I translate it. Artists are passionate. Yes. <laughs> so basically, I translated it from, uh, well, this one's in English, so I did, if the poem started in Italian, I translated in English and then vice versa. So this is my first book all together, both, uh, both languages, because I want to keep my culture and I want to keep my heritage and I want to pass it down to my children and grandchildren and whoever else comes along. Absolutely. <laughs> so now I want okay. you to talk about your book. Well, uh, poetry is the marriage of poetry and art and it's very near and dear to my heart. I've been writing poetry since I'm eight and I've been drawing since I'm seven. Mm -hmm. um, I started singing when I was five and playing guitar when I was 10. I actually wrote my first song when I was 12. So it, it, it's as far back as I can remember. And the art um, is a combination of the words and the art. Some uh, yeah, sure. more words, and I'd like to read this poem, and it's called Angels on Earth. There are angels here on earth, you see them every day. They wake you in the morning, at night they help you pray. They give you strength to try, to always reach for the sky. They love you no matter who you are, and they make you feel as bright as a star. They encourage you to follow your dream, and they are always a member of your team. They encourage you to believe in you. They are there to help with everything you do. They guide you through your life and so, they lift your spirits when you are low. An angel has been with you your whole life through. Her full-time job is loving you. So you've been touched by an angel in every way. It's your mom who's there for you every day. So wow. the poem, Beautiful. is in combination with, with the artwork. I'd like to um, read another one. This one is uh, a poem that I wrote when I had my first child. It was a girl. And the artwork is a, a stork. And the poem is called Her Face. Her face is a work of art. Her eyes, nose, and lips hold my heart. Her fingers and toes are all there. Can I hold her? Do I dare? She is perfect. She is beautiful, too. She is my firstborn child, my daughter so new. I will love her for who she is and be proud of whatever she will be. Her face is etched in my soul. She is the mirror image of me. I love that. That's the, beautiful. The, the poetry... Um, I mean, I, I definitely write every day. I draw every day. And it is so um, meaningful to me because it just, it just comes out. <laughs> and um, I'd like to read another poem. And rhyming is, is important because I am a songwriter. I'm very rhythmic, mm. uh, playing the guitar, so uh, I like I like the rhyming factor of the poems. And this is called A Woman's Place. A woman's place is where she wants to be. The only one that can define her is she. Some feel that women are not equal in the workplace. 
they feel a woman can't balance a business suit and lace. But today a woman can be anything she wants to be. Thanks to women who fought for our freedom, they had the vision to see. All that a woman can achieve and become, I believe all women can do this, not just some. Educate, don't suffocate. Become, don't be dumb. Reach for the sky, don't turn a blind eye. Grow, always want to know. Be beautiful, outside and inside. Know better, don't hide. Excel, always tell. It's a race, be a woman with style and grace. Tell everyone you are here, and you can be a woman without fear. A woman's place is anywhere she wants to be. The only one that can define her is she. And this is the um, art piece that goes with it. Uh, the book is basically... That's a very uh, powerful poem. The empowerment... Educate, don't suffocate. That's, wow. the, the empowerment of women, uh, the book is to um, empower you and mm -hmm. self-worth and self-love, which so many times um, is lacking. Yeah. And uh, being a retired high school teacher, I just find that it starts uh, early, early yeah. on and it kind of stay, stays with uh, certain, certain people. So I wrote this one for that reason and it's called Beautiful Woman. We're all beautiful in our own way. And it's called Beautiful Woman, I'm gonna read it. You are beautiful, you must know this to be true. Who you are, what you look like, there's no one like you. It is so unbelievable that you are one of a kind. No matter where you look, you will never find someone quite like you on this entire earth. Your journey started when your mother gave birth to the most beautiful baby girl for the world to know. You must continue, you must achieve, you must grow. Mistakes will be plenty along your way. Learn from them, move forward, I really must say. No one has the right to put you down or judge what you do. Don't change for anyone. Be proud to be you. Please don't buy into the game some people play. Live your dream life day to day. So remember how beautiful only you can be. Walk tall, embrace who you are, and the world will see all that you offer, all that is true. You are beautiful and always be you. Beautiful. <laughs> and it's, it's so important to I me that. that um, yeah. that I, you know, put this message out there because I just feel that so many people have so many gifts and they don't, they don't realize. They don't, they don't harness their, their own uh, gifts. Well, one of the most beautiful things that happened to me was when I did a presentation at Barnes & Noble last year uh, for the uh, children, youth, um, uh, two little girls came up to me, they were 12 years old, they bought my book, and they said to me, I want to be like you. And I Aww. found that, I know, I found that to be the most amazing thing because when you're, when you're that young, the children are very fragile, they believe you, they look up to you, and you have to be as honest as, as possible. So whatever you went through, uh, you have to bring that across as a healing source and as supportive. So giving them confidence to go on and that's do, great. that's the ultimate thing, the ultimate connection. So that, I feel like that's why we do what we do pretty much. You know, well, we try to inspire. This particular one, what I hope for you, I have three granddaughters and um, I wrote this for them. It's, it's short, but it's to the point. May you always walk on flowers. And I love that. <laughs> that is what your life should be. The sun, the moon, the stars, I yeah. wish for you eternally. Always be present in the present is my advice, it's true. To love and be loved is what I hope for you. That, that's, that's it. That's it's simple. simple. Yeah, I, I, you know, just uh, love that. And, I want to read this one here. It's every woman at any age. Of course, this is poetry for women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, but you'd be surprised. You know, any age will be attractive. You know, words of inspiration are there for a reason. You, you to lift other people up. So you'd Definitely. be surprised who can can get something out of that. Well, this is called every woman at any age. What about me? I'm standing right here. Is my life passing me by? That's my worst fear. Can I reinvent myself? 
do I dare at this age? It's a time in my life I must turn a page. One great thing about getting older, you see, is the knowledge you gain most definitely. I am beautiful inside and out, and if I don't feel that, what is life about? I must love myself and people will be breathing in my aura, which will make them see positivity gets you through the day. You must learn this in every way. You are older today than you were the day before. Take your power back. Believe that to your core. A woman must reinvent herself many times through her years. You'll get through your life with fears and tears. So my advice to you is to be strong every day and live your greatest life in every single way. Love and be loved and be your own kind of amazing by far because always remember that is what you are. What about me? Yeah, what about me? I'm the only one who can shake that tree. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. So I want to thank you both for being here. Uh, Deborah Woodbridge, Conference House. Thank you uh, for having such me. Such an honor. And June, always. Thank uh, you. Wonderful thank you. honor for you to be here also. It's just great. <laughs> I feel like I grow every time I'm here with, with both of you. And uh, we're going to have you do a little singing, I believe. So uh, we'll see you at the conference house. Looking forward to it. Hi, my name is June Palo, and I'd like to play some original music, words written by Palma Mingozi, music written by me. First song is called Find Your Wind. <laughs> He left me to the wind To the song, to the sound Of the moon He left me sitting by the moon He left me today to feel of the earth To the silk To the light-hearted touch He left me alone And I was a dove me and I found my heart behind the breastplate of my ribs murmuring the name he left me He left me alone And I was in love Of a soul in flight Oh butterfly in the springtime This song is called Make Way for Paper. Words by Palma Mingozi, music by June Palo. Paper lantern in the sky. Lead the way to the stars. Paper lantern passing by No more darkness, only light Fill my sight full of life Brilliant beating forum drum 
pave the road on overload And on the clear of rooster's morn I will be like into the dawn With sparkles in my eyes Telling names to paper planes And breathe the music upon my heart The paper lantern glows on sight On the hills of grassy moss And fill the landscape aqua blue That you that fills my love for you I will be like into the dawn With sparkles in my eyes Telling names to paper planes And breathe the music upon my heart Paper lantern in the sky Paper lantern passing by No more darkness, only light Fill my sight full of life Brilliant beating forum drum Pave the road on overload And on the clear of rooster's morn Run Away With Me, words by Palma Mingozi, music by June Palo. Come with me, take my hand, let's run away at the thoroughfare to the stars, to the stars. To the stars in the immense, in the immense universe To the stars, to the stars, to the stars in the immense, in the immense universe That sustains our breathing We are attached as one breath Giving wings, giving wings, giving wings to the wind, to the wind. Giving wings, giving wings, giving wings to the wind, to the wind. I love you and my desire for you. And 
under the covers of our imagination, our imagination. We will love under the covers of our imagination, imagination. Resting our souls in the sickle of inspiration. Remember them well. I'm trying to talk to my children about my parents. So words and music were written by me. What I am to you I miss. On my forehead always a kiss. I do so many things that remind me of them. daughter over and over again over and over again we laugh they love me as I do you I miss their unconditional love it's true important events 
normal every day Miss my father and mother Miss them always Miss them always I hope I passed all their good to you You remind me of them in things you do That warms my heart so much and so You're a generation past Didn't you know? Didn't you know? You must try to learn the history of your family Whatever you want to know, just ask me Stories about them are fun to tell They are your ancestors, your family Remember them Thank you uh, to everyone at Staten Island Community Television. Uh, hope to see you at the conference house. This is a song called Snow, where it's by Palma Mingozi, music by myself, June Palo. The snow is a blanket That covers the city in magic Illuminated in white satin She's mother to all children's happiness No, she is not cold But warm as hot chocolate And melts like a marshmallow I know the snow she harbors enlightenment To play under her covers is my delight in winter I love the snow As I do my father I will play outside for hours Build a snow family Perfect in sincerity Descend small purity Snowy flurries fall down on me Snowy flurries fall down on me I know the snow